Oh, uh, hey, Goulash here, and welcome to another episode of... The Gulag. In today's episode, I'm finally continuing Goosebumps Goose Days. Yeah, it's been a while since we last met. I'm sorry I'm back. In this video, I'll be covering the third episode of Goosebumps, The Girl Who Cried Monster, and the book that it's based on, which was itself the eighth Goosebumps story, as written by Arl Stein. This was technically the fourth episode if you count the first episode as a two-parter, but I don't. That was a Halloween special. The Girl Who Cried Monster's plot concerns a 12-year-old girl named Lucy Dark, which sounds like the name of a punk rock singer, who's fixated on monsters and scares her little brother Randy with said monsters. Oh, oh, no Lucy is the anti-Carly Beth, but honestly, she's a bit of a dickhead. This is how you scar a younger sibling. Toe better gave me back my toes. Because I promised to cut yours off and give them to him tonight. Besides traumatizing her brother, though, Lucy spends her summer as a member of Reading Rangers. I know what you're thinking, but Reading Rangers is not a less interesting ripoff of Power Rangers. It's a program where Lucy reads a book a week. In the actual book this episode is based on, Lucy states clearly that she doesn't actually finish any of the books she's assigned and just lies about finishing them. Not the best role model for kids getting into reading, but this whole story makes reading and going to the library seems scary in a strangely ironic way. You see, the fellow in charge of Reading Rangers is Mr. Mortman, the local librarian. Now, in the actual episode, Mortman comes off as a cold, standoffish fellow that looks mildly creepy in the way a male librarian that resembles a turtle would look. Wouldn't it be cool if there were real monsters? Well, I'm not so sure, Aaron. Most people like to be frightened in movies or... Stories. In the book, Mr. Mortman is much more creepy. He's a large, sweaty man with tiny eyes whose hands are always described as wet. And he's a guy who likes to shake hands and be all nice-nice with kids. The library itself is this evil-looking, isolated building with a dark reputation. There are a few passages involving Mr. Mortman that give pause, even before the horror starts. To be perfectly honest, Mortman comes off as a child molester in the book. If you didn't know you were reading a Goosebumps book, you might assume that that is the direction the story goes in. It's a very sketchy subtext. I mean, the cover is just a creepy drawing of Mr. Mortman. It's a rare Goosebumps Tim Jacobus cover that doesn't give much of a hint of what the story is about. It really leaves you guessing in dread while you read it. So what is this book slash episode really about? Well, Lucy leaves her rollerblades at the library and witnesses from the shadows Mortman eating his tarantula's crickets like he's on an episode of Fear Factor. But instead of drinking bull semen next, Mr. Mortman transforms into a background character from a Star Wars movie. The makeup effects of Monster Mortman in the episode are pretty good for a 90s kids show, and these eerily lit scenes where Mortman eats bugs are genuinely pretty disgusting and disturbing. <laughs> Like, I don't know how this cannibal holocaust shit passed on Fox Kids on Saturday mornings in the 90s when the Spider-Man cartoon on the same channel couldn't show real guns or Spider-Man punching people. It could have been worse, though. R.L. Stein's original idea for the plot had Mortman eating children instead of bugs, which would have taken things more to Freddy Krueger territory. So, Lucy is genuinely pretty shook over seeing that shit and immediately informs her parents that Mr. Mortman is a monster, but because of Lucy's Lucy's constant fibs about monsters, they don't believe her. Oh, I hope this monster thing was just a phase you were going through. Life is a phase I'm going through! Yeah, in case you didn't guess, Girl Who Cried Monster is a pun on Boy Who Cried Wolf. The episode itself isn't super eventful compared to the book. The book is over 100 pages, so this half-hour episode had to really cut out a lot of the action, which is limited to just Lucy trying to snag a pic of Mortman transforming so everyone will believe her. Aaron's purpose in the book is to be a secondary witness of Mortman's transformation that can corroborate Lucy's story. Apparently, Lucy's parents trust a friend of Lucy more than Lucy. So in the book, Lucy and Aaron stalk Mr. Mortman at his home, but that doesn't make it into the episode. So Aaron's role is reduced, and he doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Mortman knows where you live. So what? He could be on his way to your house this minute. There's also much more suspense in the book, with Lucy potentially being trapped with Mortman, and an extended chase scene that just isn't in the show. The show just revels in Mortman eating weird shit like his pet tarantulas. Speaking of which, in the book, Mortman's pets are turtles, and he eats flies instead of crickets, but crickets are easier to film than flies, I guess. In the end, Lucy gets a pic of Mortman, but he's invisible in it like a vampire or something. Mr. Mortman winds up being invited to dinner by Lucy's parents against her wishes, and, uh, Lucy's 
parents transform into cobra people. <laughs> Turns out the Dark family were actually monsters themselves the whole time, Lucy herself being aware of this fact. We are monsters. We know that. It's the sort of twist ending that R.L. Stein used a lot, usually when he was running out of pages and needed to end a book quick. Mormon was the first other monster to live in Timberland Falls in 20 years, which is why Lucy's parents didn't believe he was a monster at first. The Dark family apparently needed to get rid of Mormon because he might endanger them somehow and cause the townspeople to run the family out of town. And when you two get bigger, you're gonna get your training fangs. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Lucy is scared of Mortman in the book, disgusted by his appearance, but she's aware that she's biologically a cobra person. Also, aren't the cops gonna be a little suspicious that Mr. Mortman just disappeared? Even by M. Night Shyamalan standards, this is a half-ass twist. The episode adds a little extra scene with Aaron to try to give him something to do in the show where you think he's gonna get eaten, but he's just offered a pie as dessert. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this just raises more questions. Why is this kid sneaking around the side of the house wearing a mask at night? He's lucky this family isn't packing heat. Talk about time. Well, what's for dessert? The Girl Who Cried Monster is an okay Goosebumps book and an alright episode of the show. It's just not the most eventful Goosebumps story and even less stuff happens in the show, but man, in both versions, Mr. Mortman is really creepy. I give The Girl Who Cried Monster three drops of monster blood out of five. If you've ever wanted to see Jabba the Hutt and Jar Jar Binks' love child eat a rubber spider, this episode has got you covered. You fucking weirdo. Oh, before I go, I just want you to know that I have a bonus complete animated reading of the Girl Who Cried Monster up on the Dr. Wolfula Patreon. Donate to the channel today if you want to hear a cartoon zombie read a children's horror book to you for two and a half hours. Anyway, I've been Goulash. See you fucking weirdos next time. If you like this video, like it. And if you loved it, journey further into the Wolfula Air by clicking the subscribe and bell buttons to find out when all of my latest videos and streams go live. This video was brought to you by my kind supporters on Patreon, whose names are scrolling by. Support the channel today on Patreon and get access to bonus movie and TV commentaries, audiobooks, comic readings, film live streams, and credits at the end of videos. Finally, I'd like to give a very special thanks to my true Wolfie Light supporters on Patreon and my YouTube channel members memberships for their pledges. Their support is greatly appreciated and helps the channel and my dark influence continue to grow. Thank you all once more from the bottom of my evil heart for your help. Alrighty, Dr. Wolfula signing out. See you all next time at the Wolfula.